In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The word of the Lord is found recorded in the first book of Kings, the eighth and ninth chapters. So Solomon held the feast at that time, and all Israel with him, a great assembly from Lebo Hamath to the brook of Egypt, before the Lord our God seven days. On the eighth day he sent the people away, and they blessed the king, and went to their homes joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had shown to David his servant and to Israel his people. And so, as soon as Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that Solomon desired to build, the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. And the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your plea, which you have made before me. I have consecrated this house that you have built by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. And as for you, if you walk, if you will walk before me as David your father walked, with integrity of heart and uprightness, doing according to all that I have commanded you, and keeping my statutes and my rules, then I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever, as I promised David your father, saying, You shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. But if you turn aside from following me, you or your children, and do not keep my commandments and my statutes that I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land that I have given them, and the house that I have consecrated for my name I will cast out of my sight, and Israel will become a proverb and a byword among the peoples, and this house will become a heap of ruins. Everyone passing by it will be astonished and will hiss and will say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? They will say, Because they abandoned the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore the Lord has brought all this disaster on them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The word of the Lord is found recorded in the epistle of St. James, the second chapter, beginning at the fourteenth verse. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is found recorded in the Gospel of St. Mark, the 14th chapter, beginning at the 66th verse. 
And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while the bystanders said again to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time, and Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A Devotion from the Writings of the Venerable Bede But we should note this, too. Having explained the, the dedication and subsequent festival, Scripture concludes, And Solomon dismissed the people who blessed the king and set out for their own dwellings joyfully, and glad of heart for all the goodness the Lord had done for David his servant and for his people Israel. When he has brought to completion the gift of resurrection, our Lord dismisses his elect joyfully to their eternal dwelling places. Surely he does not move them further away from his presence, but lets them pass into the dwelling place of the heavenly fatherland after the division at the final judgment, which according to the saying of the apostle, we know will take place in the air, so that each may receive his promised seat in the kingdom in proportion to his deserts. What is said here, that the people set out for their own dwellings, refers to the setting out of which our Lord speaks in the gospel, in my Father's house are many mansions. And it is well said that the people set out for their own dwellings while the blessing, while blessing the king, because this is the single supremely tranquil and joyful action of the heavenly citizens singing hymns of thanksgiving to their maker. Thus is it written, Happy are they who dwell in your house, they will praise you forever. Thus the same prophet David has filled the final seven psalms with the sweetness of the divine praises. Moreover, in the eighth psalm before the end of the Psalter, he commemorates by blessing the Lord for his victory in the fight in which he killed the giant Goliath. In this he clearly indicates that all who triumph in their contests against the malignant enemy here below will sing the praises of their maker and helper there, where they will have true rest. They blessed the king and set out for their own dwellings joyfully and glad of heart for all the goodness the Lord had done for David his servant and for his people Israel. The just do indeed go into the dwellings of the heavenly mansions joyfully, because of the goodness they have received from the Lord. Although the labors of this age are burdensome and prolonged, whatever ends, whatever ends in eternal blessedness seems short-lived and trifling. Hence, each one of us, dearly loved, must press on with his devout actions by exerting himself to the extent of his ability by encouraging, entreating, and rebuking in the building up of the house of God, lest if the heavenly king catches sight of anyone slothful now in the work of building his temple, he may make, his, make him an outcast from the great solemn celebration at the time of the dedication. We confess together our common and saving faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things, Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.